hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel the physicist so in this video we are going to discuss refraction of light based upon the Cobb's color theory of light okay so for this we consider two medium the first medium is rare medium and we incident a Cobb's skull through im path in the rare medium on a surface s s dash which is separating two media the rare medium first medium and the second medium which is denser medium okay so here i is the angle of incidence of the cop skull and cop skull is coming with the velocity v okay so according to newton uh, when the cop skull come very close in the limiting distance from the refracting surface it starts experiencing a force of attraction okay toward the uh, second medium so the force of attraction is in perpendicular direction from the surface as s dash okay so this will cause the velocity to increase and produce acceleration in the cop skull so in this limiting region a b and a dash b dash the velocity of the cop skull will increase and and it will reach v dash okay this this velocity and beyond these two region uh, these region uh, this region between a b and a dash b dash beyond this the force of attraction is zero there is no force so it will go with the constant velocity so in the first medium it is coming with the constant velocity up to m the velocity v and beyond n it is going with the velocity v dash the constant velocity okay because no force is attract uh, no force of attraction is acting on the cop skull beyond n and beyond m okay in the rare and denser medium moreover the force is in perpendicular direction so since newton's second law is a vector law okay m a vector or also d by dt of p vector since this is a vector equation it means it is not a single equation it is three equations for each component so f of x is equal to d by dt of p x and f of y is equal to d p y by dt and f of z is equal to d p z by dt now since force is acting perpendicularly to the uh, only in perpendicular direction so only this force is non zero okay only this force is non zero but these forces are zero so in x direction and in z direction the momentum is conserved uh, this means that p x is equal to constant so velocity in the x direction will be constant okay uh, and this is the x direction and this is the y direction okay and also p z is equal to a constant so these two uh, momentums are constant and corresponding velocities are constant okay so there is no change in velocity in these two directions okay velocity is not changing in x direction also the velocity is not changing in z direction but since this force is not zero therefore the velocity is only changing in y direction or the perpendicular direction okay not in parallel direction and this velocity increased 
and this doesn't depend upon the angle of incidence i but it depend upon the nature of these two mediums okay so how much velocity will increase this will depend upon the nature of the medium so and is different for different materials so kopskel come through the path im with a constant velocity v then it start experiencing a force from ab to a dash b dash okay this is a force attractive force which is which is uh, acting in perpendicular direction to the surface s s dash and this causes velocity v to increase to a new value v dash okay and this is the incident angle of the kopskel and this is r is the refracted angle of the kopskel okay so at m we can decompose the velocity v into two components one is parallel to the surface and another one is perpendicular to the surface okay the parallel uh, since this angle is i and also this angle will be the i okay uh, just basic geometry okay and uh, so uh, this is the v cos theta or in this case theta is i so v cos i and the parallel component will be v sin i okay similarly at n since the velocity is increased to v dash so this perpendicular component will be v dash cos r and the parallel component is v dash sin r and now since the velocity didn't change into the uh, the parallel component of the velocity didn't change so this means that the parallel component at point m which is v x is equal to v sin i will be equal to the parallel component at point n which is v dash so v x dash which is v dash sin r okay so we can write it down like so we can write it as sin i v sin i is equal to v dash sin r okay so we can write it as further sin i by sin r is equal to v dash by v okay so v dash is the velocity of kopskel in second medium which is the denser medium and v is the velocity of the kopskel in first medium okay and i is the angle of incidence r is the angle of refraction okay now we know that when light come from rare to denser medium it bend toward the normal okay it bends toward the normal <clears throat> so this means i is greater than r and also note that the angle i cannot be greater than 90 degree and r also cannot be greater than 90 degree so i and r okay uh, can change between 0 to 90 degrees <clears throat> okay so for this sin 
also changes from sin i or sin r is bounded between 0 and 1 and from 0 degree it increases the value of sin increases up to 1 okay 90 at 90 degree <clears throat> so if angle i is greater than r this means sin i will be greater than r uh, sin i will be greater than sin r okay this means sin i by sin r will be greater than 1 okay which implies v dash by v will be greater than 1 and this implies v dash will be greater than v so newton's copsical theory of light predicts that the v dash will be greater than v that is velocity of light light in the denser medium will be larger as compared to velocity in the rare medium okay and what is this thing here what does this equation say okay let's see so it is sin i by sin r is equal to v dash by v what is v dash is equal to velocity of light velocity of light in second medium divided by velocity of light in first medium okay and this is equal to the refractive index okay this is equal to uh, okay so we can write it down v dash by c or v by c and v by v dash by c is the refractive index of second medium and v by c is the refractive index of first medium so this is equal to refractive index of medium 2 with respect to refractive index of medium 1 okay so this is the snell's law this is nothing but snell's law okay which says that sine of angle of incidence bears a constant ratio to the sine of angle of refraction okay this is the snell's law okay so newton was able to drive the snell's law which is the law for refraction of light based upon his corpse color theory but he made a wrong prediction that velocity of light in denser medium is greater than that of in rare medium okay but the result of Foucault and Michelson on the velocity of light showed that the velocity of light in the denser medium is actually less than velocity of light in the rare medium okay so we can say that Newton's Cobb's color theory is untenable that is it cannot be further supported okay because it may makes wrong predictions and this is not the only ground on which the Newton's theory is found invalid so in 1800 young discovered a okay young discovered a phenomena of interference of light okay he discovered the interference of light this phenomena cannot be explained based upon the corpuscular theory of light okay so in this phenomena he uh, the young observed that when light is added to light it produces 
so when light is added to light it means that if two light sources are shine on a single screen then they produce darkness okay so newton's theory was unable to explain this how could light plus light lead to darkness okay this was uh, the, the newton based upon his theory of light the cops color theory was unable to show that okay how this could happen okay so phenomena uh, belonging to this class cannot be explained by the newton newton's theory of cops color uh cops color right okay so because two cops color coming together cannot destroy themselves okay so that is just unable to explain these phenomena based upon the cops color model and another case that was considered by newton was the the case of simultaneous simultaneous reflection and refraction okay this was this case was also considered by newton and he tried to explain based upon the cops color theory now the question is what is simultaneous reflection and refraction of light okay so when light falls on a uh, on a surface separating the two medium two medias uh, so when the light falls on a surface some of it get reflected okay following the ang uh, law of reflection so i is equal to r and some of it transmitted to the another medium okay also following the in this case following the laws of refraction okay so how this is possible based upon the cops color theory so in explanation to this newton assumed that the particle had fit so that so particles have some properties so that the, some of them are in state of favorable to reflection and others were in the condition suitable for transmission of uh, transmission okay so this was the case considered by and explained by a reflection uh, about the simultaneous reflection and refraction of light by newton based upon his cops color theory in which he said that some of the particles which are coming in the incident ray some of are favorable to reflection of light and some of them are favorable to refraction of light so based upon this we will get simultaneous reflection and refraction of light no explanation of interference diffraction and polarization was attempted by the newton because also because very little was known about these phenomena at the time of newton okay and why why uh, the cops skull is attracted toward the refracting surface and why it was repelled by the reflecting surface okay origin of these forces of repulsion and attraction okay in the direction normal to surface was not explained by newton plausibly okay he did, didn't give any plausible explanation for this okay so that's why newton's cops color theory failed and the new theory which is the wave theory was derived uh, by young and huygen and others so in spite of uh, these faults of uh, newton's theory 
or these defects of the Newton's theory of the Cobb's color light, light model. Uh, people did not uh, discarded this theory immediately because uh, Newton was very big man at that time and there were some skepticisms about the wave theory of light okay so why is that what were the uh, reasons for them perhaps the two most important experimental facts which led to early belief in Cobb's color model of light were the rectilinear propagation one was the rectilinear propagation of light And second was the light could not propagate, uh, the light could propagate through vacuum. Okay, so propagation through propagation through vacuum. Okay, so we cannot explain waves propagating through vacuum uh, and we will see that uh, for this uh, the hypothetical medium was believed to exist okay it is called ether we will see and discuss uh, in other videos okay but these were the two main regions why the Cobb's color theory was invented okay the rectilinear propagation because of newton's second law force if the force does not act on anything they propagate in straight lines so and because the newton's laws are applied to particles only so that's why they were light was thought of made up of particles and also propagation through vacuum and since we need a medium for a waves to propagate so since light can pass through vacuum so that that's why it was thought like a cop skull of the cop skulls okay and like particles so the domain of optics which assume that light, light travels in straight lines is called the geometric geometrical optics okay so it is which is easily explained based on the basis of Cobb's color model of light okay however careful experiment later showed that the shadows are not perfectly dark okay when an object is put under light the shadows are not perfectly dark okay there is some light that enters the geometrical shadow of the object which is due to the phenomena of diffraction okay uh, this uh, phenomena of diffraction is essentially through uh, due to the wave character of light and cannot be explained on the basis of the Cobb's color model okay so as we shall see in future diffraction effects are usually difficult to absorb observe because the wavelength of light uh, the wavelength which is associated with light that we can see is very small okay uh, so these waves are uh, having extremely small wavelengths and if the order of object order of size of object is same as that of wavelength then diffraction experiments uh, diffraction observations are uh, can be seen okay so they are so they are uh, more apparent in case of when the size of object and size of wavelength of light is of the same order okay and also i think i should mention here that 
if we are below the shade of a big very big building so under this shade we can read the book okay the light enters the shadow of the building okay but this is not due to diffraction but that is due to the scattering of light by air molecules the phenomenon of scattering is also responsible for the blue color of the sky and the red color of the setting sun okay so if earth did not have atmosphere then the shadows would be extremely dark and they are dark on moon okay so on moon you cannot read book in your own shadow okay because there is no atmosphere there okay no air molecules to scatter the light so that's why we cannot have we cannot read books in our own shadow but even on the surface of moon a small amount of light does enter the geometrical shadow and this is because of diffraction so this is all about the cops color theory and its limitations so in the next video we are, we will study about the wave theory of light and what was the hypothetical medium we will see the ether that was just introduced for the wave propagation okay so we'll see about this in the next video thank you